Hey guys, it's, it's Rebecca. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I need a drink of water. <laughs> I didn't expect a frog to come out of my throat when I started talking. Um, okay, so I'm going to give a few of you, I'm going to give you guys some time to jump on the live feed in case you want to ask some questions. You can always watch the replay. Um, I know there's a lot of activity going on on our group right now, and so I thought even though it's late at night, some of you night owls like me are up and are trying to solve some of your problems, okay? So um, in this particular video, I want to talk about some of the ways to not market your practice. Okay, there's been a lot of conversation going on about like, hey, we should do this, or hey, I should do that, or I did this, or I tried that, and I really want to spare you some um, time <laughs> and some money and preserve your reputation. There are some things I'm going to share with you that we should definitely discuss. These are things that I have learned in 21 years as a massage therapist that work and that don't work, and I have to tell you guys, a lot of the stuff that I have to share with you might fly in the face of what you were taught in massage school or what you have read in books or what you have heard from other therapists. What has worked for one therapist may not work for you, okay? It's important to remember that, all right? So, um, see a couple of you are just joining on the call or on the live feed right now, so feel free to ask any questions as we go along or engage with any of this material. But I'm just going to talk for a little bit and give you guys a couple of things that I've been thinking about based on some of the posts that are happening right now. Hi, Mindy. I love you, Mindy. <laughs> um, okay, so handing out business cards. Let's talk about this. I could write an entire article on this and maybe I will. I do not hand out business cards. Does that shock you? Like, I can't even remember the last time I had handed out a business card, except maybe I was like um, traveling or something like that. And it was a quick way for somebody to get a hold of, you know, to like give them my information. But I do not pass out business cards as a way of building my practice. I, I, and I actually never have. It's never, well, that's not true. I've done it and it doesn't work. So I want to know from you guys, if anybody's watching or listening, feel free to type in there and chat with me. Um, have you handed out business cards? Like, and what I mean is like the, is like the flyby. Okay. So this is what I call cross your fingers and hope it works marketing for massage therapists, which again, I, I don't recommend that you guys, you got to have a strategy and you got to execute that strategy. So maybe what a lot of you are doing or what you've seen other people do is there's like, there's a bulletin board at the local coffee shop and it's like plastered with business cards from people. And they're all stuck in there with pins and they're falling off or, you know, that kind of thing. And, or maybe you're going to, you know, leave business cards, I don't know, just random places. Um, leaving business cards at a chiropractic office, of course, with their permission or just somewhere. But I, my question is, if you're going to leave business cards, where are you leaving them, first of all? Why are you leaving them? What results are you hoping are going to come from that? Okay. I, um, yeah, I think it is far more effective if you have business cards um, and you have an opportunity to hand out like a face-to-face -face business card. If someone is interested in your services, do not hand them your card and say, call me. You know what? They're not going to call you. They just won't. They'll lose the card. You'll be very, I would be very, very surprised if I ever heard from that person again, okay? If you have a person that you would hand a business card to and you would be saying to them, um, you know, they're saying, hey, I, I want to book an appointment. Get their information and you call them. You be proactive about that. That keeps you in control of the sale. That keeps you that keeps you with that lead in your hand instead of giving away your information and hoping, let's just cross your fingers again, hoping 
that that works, okay? So, oh, hi, Matt, welcome. Did you just PM me? I think you just private messaged me. This is all inspired by your post, Matt, so tune in. <laughs> and you guys feel free to ask any questions, okay? Um, but uh, that's, that's one piece of advice, but just randomly handing out business cards is not a good strategy at all. Don't do it. It'll waste paper. It'll be a square toothpick. Um, business cards are good for dropping in fish bowls at restaurants to see if you win the catered lunch that month. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. Okay. So, hey, so I've got a couple of you here that are just chatting. Tell me, um, do you, are you guys, uh, we're talking, I'm talking about what not to do to market your practice and currently talking about business cards. Okay. So I want to know and feel free to just put in the chat box there. Um, have you dropped off business cards as a way of marketing your business and did it work? Okay, I want to get some like real, real results and see if this is actually working for you guys. And for those of you that it is working for, it's because you're doing something else, not just, oh, hey, I'm going to drop off business cards. Okay, so maybe Mindy, you tell me, or Matt, or Christy. There's a few other people on that I can't see your names because you're not in the chat box. Um, but type in there and let me know, did you, have you done this? Have you dropped off business cards? Have you left them places? Um, and is that working for you? Okay. Okay. So Christy says, yeah, it didn't work. Christy, where did you leave them? Did you, did you, did you have a strategy? Was it strategic or did you just kind of like, Hey, I'm going to drop off business cards and just leave them somewhere. Okay. Cause that's one of the things you definitely do not want to do. You will look foolish. You will look desperate and you will not get business from it. It's a waste of your time. It's one thing to be like, ah, oh, just throw some business cards out here. Like just in case, but do not put out a bunch of business cards, you know, and smear them all over your town and then sit there and hope that the phone will ring. It's just not going to work. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Awesome. By the way, let me tell you another thing about business cards. Okay, graphic design is really important, you guys. Never underestimate the power of good graphic design. Do not make business cards yourself. Do not do it. Do not use Vistaprint templates. Do not do it. They look cheap. They look unprofessional. Somebody's going to go, oh, I've seen that same template before. It doesn't work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. Okay, invest in the power of good graphic design. Get a logo. Get a professional image. Um have people review it that you love and trust and know have an eye for that thing, that kind of thing, and get feedback from them. Don't just throw out your own handmade kink, and for heaven's sakes, do not use the print at home perforated ones that you buy in a box at Office Max. Okay, that's just, that's communicating something about you. It's going to say, I'm cheap. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't have money. I don't have a successful practice. It's going to hurt you. Okay. So let me just see here. Jamie says, I haven't dropped business cards. I thought about dropping small menus with my prices and info about my business and experience. Is that just as, yes, Jamie. Yes. That is just as bad. <laughs> Not bad. Okay. It's courageous. You guys, I mean, for sure. Like I always say, you got to be gutsy. You got to take risks and put yourself out there. That is so important. And I love that you would, that doing that might be better than doing nothing or having a really bad website or something. Okay, Jamie. So I love that you are thinking along those lines, but as I have said in many, many, many responses to you guys in these posts, don't do anything until you know who your ideal clients are. All of, I have done so many discovery calls with, with a uh, massage therapist this week. And when I ask them for the most part, who are your clients? Who do you want to work on? And they're like, oh, just anyone, just anyone and everyone. And that is a recipe for failure. I think it was Bill Cosby, bless his heart, that said, I don't know what the recipe for success is, but I know that the recipe for failure is to try to be everything to everyone. And we totally do that as massage therapists. We just want to get anybody through the door and you're like, oh, hey, you got low back pain. I can help with that. Oh, you're pregnant. I can work on you. Oh, you're this, you're that. And it, it doesn't, it's very, very confusing. And it just means you are competing with every other massage therapist out there that's doing that. Okay. So to answer your question a little bit further, Jamie, get clear about that. Do you have a niche? Do you have particular clients you are trying to attract? Most people do not care about your bio. They do not care about your skills or your modalities, and they do not care what you charge. 
They want to know if they are the client that you are looking for. In other words, they want to know, can this person help me? You know, okay, so let's see. Mindy says, yep, no results. Hey babe, would you mind closing the door? I'm just worried about waking up sleeping children. My children are sleeping. Um, so Mindy says, yep, no results in midwife offices and Cairo, but uh, on card, or, but on card among a ton others. Mindy, you have to clarify that for me. I think there's some typos in there I'm not quite understanding. But no, no results, okay? Um, and then Matt says, I'm starting a strategy of places to drop them off. Okay, but Matt, you need a strategy for your practice first, not just a strategy of where you're going to drop your cards off. Let me, let me, let me put it this way. Let me think of an example here. Okay, if I tell, if I ask you, hey, I'm looking for a good place to eat. And you're like, oh my gosh, there is this steakhouse down the road that is so good. And man, they make the best, most amazing, medium rare steak. It's like pink inside and it's kind of, oh, you, you, it's, it's amazing. Okay, but I'm a vegan. I do not care about the steakhouse. I don't care how good the steak is. And you talk to me about a pink bloody steak, I'm going to throw up. That's just not what I'm looking for, okay? So it depends. What if I say I'm looking for a good meal? Oh, okay. Well, what are you looking for? Actually, I'm really in the mood for pad thai. Oh, there's this Thai restaurant that's five miles down the road that I to die for. Okay, now you're helping me figure out what I want by getting really clear about what I'm looking for. Is this making sense, you guys? Can you think about how this applies to your massage practice? Okay, so it's not just a strategy of where to dump off your cards. You got to know what kind of clients you want, and the answer cannot be anybody and everybody. What problem do you solve? What do you love to do? What are you a master at? Or what do you want to be a master at? There was somebody that just was messaging me and she was saying that she has just finished doing this case study with scoliosis, which I think is so cool. Massage and chiropractic, x-rays and all of this stuff. Like she wants to be the massage therapist to help people with scoliosis. Is there any question in your mind if somebody who's struggling with scoliosis, where you should send them, you should send them to her because she knows what she's doing. She's building mastery at it. She's creating a name for herself as this therapist that can help people with scoliosis. Does that make sense? Okay, and Christy, good. You're looking for high-end clients. But again, by the way, you guys, everybody should be looking for high-end clients. <laughs> You want to have clients that can afford massage. And this is, and I, I'm not laughing like it, it's, it's, I'll tell you the story. It's this kind of funny thing. I remember years ago, gosh, this must have been in 1999, okay, when I, um, I didn't have a website and the internet was like totally new. I was like barely using email. Um, I don't even know how I came across this person, but it was like a massage marketing guy. He was like a marketing coach. And he, actually, he sent out newsletters. Guys, that's what we did. Those of you that are young and don't know what it's like to grow up without the internet, this guy was like mailing out newsletters, okay? And in one of the things, one of the newsletters, he said, if you want to build your practice, you actually need to look for wealthy people, and appeal to people that have, or just appeal to people that have discretionary money to spend on massage. And that's so, some of us just go, oh, that's like so uncool. That's like so greedy. No, it's not, you guys. At least when you're getting clear about your demographic, you need to know that these are people that can afford massage therapy, will pay your prices, and will keep coming back. That's very, very important. So Christy, you're barking up the right tree. I love it. High-end clients. Are you looking at celebrities? Are you wanting to work with movie stars? Are you wanting to work with rock stars that come into town? Those are some things I want you to get really, really clear about. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And Mindy clarified. She said, no results in midwife offices in Cairo, but one card among many others. Okay. So I want to know, did you get any results from that, Mindy? Okay. And then Christy is doing cupping. Okay, but the tricky thing about cupping is you then don't want to fall into the pit, the, the trap of being the person that has to educate everybody about what cupping is. Because as I've said before, people don't care about your modalities. They literally don't care. You have this whole list of like, if most therapists have this whole list of like what they do and I do cupping or I do, I do this, I do that, you know, that kind of thing. 
and nobody knows what that is and it actually it actually repels clients okay it can be useful later after you've established yourself and you have this reputation for like and your clients are talking about what you do is cupping or what your technique does is really really cool okay but I still Christy still want you to think about what problem you solve think from the customers end. what are they looking for no one's gonna get online and go I need somebody that does cupping unless you know it's like that one in a thousand person that's actually somebody's told them hey you got to try this cupping thing and go google cupping in your area okay it's again that's the very slow and painful way to build a practice okay so get clear about who you want to serve and direct your marketing towards their problems that you can solve not the techniques that you use i hope that's making sense if it's not post a question in there okay let me see what jamie has to say jamie says i want to attract clients who understand the value of quality massage. I'm struggling now with being in the most frugal area of Utah County. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Utah, where there are like 18 massage schools and everybody's been through it and everyone charges $25 because everyone and their mother does massage. I get it. Okay, I'm just reading your full thing here, Jamie, one second. Struggling with being in the most frugal area of Utah County, so I'm competing with people offering massage out of their house. Okay, I wanna track those who are just looking for the cheapest deal or Groupon type clients. How do I do that? Same thing. You should always be trying to attract clients who understand the value of quality massage. But again, get clear about who those people are. What problems do they have? What problems do you solve? What are you an expert at? That's what's gonna differentiate you from everybody else. If you go, I just do relaxation massage. Well, okay, great, so does everybody. Somebody had just posted that. I said, that's like saying, I want a doctor that practices medicine. Don't they all? You don't have to say that, okay? so. Figure that out. You've got to develop a niche for yourself, a specialty for yourself. Otherwise, you will be invisible. You will always be competing with everybody else, and you will feel like you need to lower your rates to compete. Does that make sense, Jamie? I hope that answers your question. Okay. All right. Let's see. Dustin, yes, your clients love it when you tell them about your modalities. True, but those are clients that you already have. Are those regular clients? Those are people that you already have a captive audience for. Those are people that are already in your office. Some therapists are even struggling to get anyone through their office. So Dustin, tell me, you know, how many clients you have, what are they coming for? And yes, once you have them in your practice and you have a relationship with them, sure, totally be like, hey, oh my gosh, I remember years ago, I think it was like, it was like 1996, I had just gone to this new seminar and I had learned something about asthma or respiratory I can't even remember what it was and I was working part-time at a coffee shop at a bagel shop at the time and one of my managers had asthma and she'd always talked about it and I was like hey Carla I just learned this cool technique and I was ta I was just thinking that you would really like it because we were talking about asthma you know and I was explaining to her this modality and she thought that was so cool and she loved hearing about it and she came for a treatment and she loved that I would be thinking of her as I was learning these new modalities. She wanted to learn about it. Okay, so that's part of the thing is that you probably already have a relationship with those people. They're interested in trying something new or you're saying, hey, now that I've got your attention and now that you're a regular massage client, you know, let's try some uh, you know, myofascial release and what is that? Oh, it's this, you know, but you, I'm guessing Dustin and tell me if that's not the case. Um, I'm guessing that you already have a relationship with those people and you're already working on them and they're just interested in trying new stuff. Okay. Those are really, really, really great questions, you guys. Okay. Okay. So I, you know, wanted to definitely answer those, but, um, but please, um, do not drop off don't just go throw business cards all over the city. It's not an effective way of marketing. Okay. Um, and for those of you that missed that, I said, if you have somebody that you want to hand your business card to, like they're saying, Hey, I want to call you. Don't give them your information. You get their name and their phone number and you call them or better yet, open up your book right then and there and schedule the appointment. We sometimes do this weird thing of like, yeah, I'll call you. Sure. I'll get in touch with you. If you have a hot prospect, right? They're a hot lead. Somebody that is ready to book an appointment, book the appointment, <laughs> do whatever it takes. Book the appointment, seal the deal, okay? That's my coaching on that. Okay, let me just think for a second. There was something else that was going on on the Facebook group today about that. Um, we were saying don't, don't, we've touched on this before. Groupon is a terrible, I, Groupon can put you out of business, guys. 
And again, the same thing with Groupon is that it's elusive. You think, oh, I'm going to get all these clients and I'm going to get paid to work on them. They're not going to be your ideal clients. They're usually not going to stick around. They're people that are looking for a good deal and it's not going to be the most effective way of marketing. It's going to give you a false umbrella of security. Trust me, I've done that. Don't do that. Um, and then, oh, and then print advertising. Somebody was talking about um, paying for an ad in the newspaper. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, there's a local magazine around here that is for like arts and healing and community. It's kind of like that, that uh, like very good market, like very good audience. And the readership are people that would likely be looking for body work and Feldenkrais and craniosacral and chakra balancing and all of that stuff. Okay, when I first started my uh, the practice that I have now when I started it eight, nine years ago, um, I paid for an ad like that was like this big, it was like $350. I got one client from it, one client. So you have to look at the return on your investment. Um, return on your investment, like, okay, I've spent $350, it better generate me at least like three times that, otherwise it's not worth it, okay? so. Print advertising, usually like paying in magazines. People don't read stuff like that anymore. Unless your target market definitely is people that read newspapers, <laughs> like old people, or I don't know. But I've never, I've rarely ever, ever seen print advertising work, like paid print advertising work. So I don't recommend doing that. Okay. Dustin's asking about rap cards. Again, it just depends. Who is your niche? Who are you trying to attract? Um, where are you placing those rock carts? Okay. If I'm a pregnancy massage therapist and I have rock cards and I'm leaving them at a nail salon, that's probably not going to be effective. You might catch a, a, you know, the very occasional pregnant woman that comes through there, but rock cards left in the office of a chiropractor that specializes in working with pregnant women. Yeah, that's that could be more effective, okay? That's um, that's done with strategy, not just cross your fingers and hope it works. Christy asked, asked about BNI. Absolutely. I think BNI is great. Face-to-face -face networking is great. People get to know you. They get to know uh, you personally. You get to do your little spiels about what you do and who you're looking for. And then they give you direct referrals and they also have you in mind. BNI is great because it's a group of people that are out to help other entrepreneurs through networking. So you're developing specific strategic relationships with people and you are, they will be in, in BNI, they'll only let one massage therapist in the group if I remember correctly, if that's still accurate, okay? So you get to be that massage therapist and you get to constantly be talking about what you do and what kind of clients you're looking for. But again, go into BNI with your niche already defined, with the clients that you want to serve, you know, clearly defined so that you can, um, so that you can utilize your time more effectively. I hope that that makes sense. Okay, so that's a couple of things, you guys. I'm gonna sign off. I gotta get a drink of water. My voice is terrible and I need to go to sleep. Um, I hope that is helpful for you guys. Um, if you have you know, really big problems that you feel like you need some specific help solving, just feel free to private message me. I also posted um, a that I have some, I've opened up some slots for my Rock Your Massage Practice Academy that's an eight week mentoring, like for only for very, very serious business builders, people who are absolutely committed and in dire need of doing something fast, okay, to get your, to either launch your practice or get your practice going and end the struggle, okay? So if you're interested in that, just click on that link and fill out the application and schedule a call with me. Um, that's free, okay? You guys are awesome. Keep posting your questions. Keep helping other people out. I love that you're a part of this group. Thank you so much for making it an awesome community and a great place to be. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.